My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I got people to make friends just trying to make some money. My job is not just to teach, but to entertain and educate. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Right now, the conventional wisdom says this market's a long way from bottoming. Even if you get the occasional good day like yesterday or a day like today, Dow dipped 47 points, S&P declined 0.13%, NASDAQ shed 0.15%. But I got to tell you, I hate these kinds of consensus predictions because they're worthless when it comes to doing what you and I do, picking individual stocks. The truth is, we're going to have rolling bottoms just like we had rolling tops. As long as you know how to identify the signs, you'll be able to spot them ahead of time and figure out how aggressive you should be and how much money you can possibly make. As for the broader averages, I'm one of only a handful of people who generally believes we could have an entire bull market within a bear market situation, but only if we get some specific signposts. Let me tell you what I'm looking for. All right, first... We need to see oil prices stabilize at some level that's both good for the producers, which are American, by the way, and acceptable to the American public. Right now, oil's all over the place, up big versus where it was trading six months ago, but down nearly 20 bucks from its highs a couple of weeks ago. Oil's erratic nature causes tremendous hand wring. I can't blame anyone for worrying about it. The president wants to give us a gas tax holiday, 18 cents a gallon. That's nothing, but it's not nothing, not nothing, right? I mean, a little bit, but not enough. Biden studiously avoids doing the one thing, though, that could really bring down the price of crude. He needs to arm the Ukrainians to the teeth so they can quickly beat Russia and put the war to bed. The White House has been reluctant to go all in on this conflict because they're worried about triggering World War III. I don't think they understand that Russia already sees this as a proxy war with the West. And it's not going well, given that Ukraine lacks the armaments it needs to win. So oil remains in play as the Europeans are grabbing every bit of spare capacity to make up for the lack of Russian imports. And the president of the United States only sends Ukraine the bare minimum. In terms of artillery, we're sending Ukraine the equivalent of one-seventh of what the North Vietnamese used against our army in just two weeks of the Vietnam War. I think we should be supporting Zelensky like the Soviets supported Ho Chi Minh. Even when you put aside moral considerations purely in terms of raw political calculus, Biden needs to get gas prices down if he wants to get reelected. And the most straightforward way to do that is to make sure Ukraine wins this war decisively. At the same time, we need to see an end to rampant food inflation. Once again, that all comes down to Ukraine, formerly the breadbasket of Europe. Naturally, it's tough to farm in a war zone. Could we make Ukraine safe for agriculture? Sure. But we might have to set up a no-fly zone in the western part of the country, which Biden doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to create a no-fly zone because that's American fighter planes firing at Russian ones. And it's a hop, skip, and a jump from there to nuclear war. I understand that. By the way, I think there's a very good argument for that. But a no-fly zone is, while extremely risky, it is the best way to get food inflation under control. You know what else is risky? Worldwide food riots, something that seems inevitable if the war doesn't end relatively soon. I'll have a lot more to say about Ukraine in the coming days because it's like it's it, I think it's very important for our markets. But more importantly, uh, there are endless lives being lost that somehow wrongly has fallen off the front page, just as the Russians would like it to. What else? This one's a bitter pill, but we might need to see unemployment rate rise to 5 percent for a couple of quarters. That would tamp down demand and give us some breathing room in the fight against inflation. There are so many companies with terrific technology that will allow many jobs to be automated out of existence. I'm also betting that work from home will lead to a general thinning of the ranks as executives realize they don't need as many people as they thought once thought to work at their companies. But what matters is the Fed won't stop tightening until the unemployment rate is substantially higher. I know. Look, these are all tough. I'm telling it like it is. Fourth, speculation needs to be wiped out wherever it can be found before we can truly bottom. We've made a ton of progress here. The garbage IPOs have stopped coming. The days when people bought a stock because they loved the product without knowing anything about the business are over. You like sweet green? Eat their darn salad. Forget the stock. You like oat milk? Terrific, but don't buy Oatly. You wear Allbirds or Warby Parkers? Good for you. Don't touch the stocks. Like Weber or Traeger? Make it the grill, not the stock. How about the SPACs? There are still people proud of bringing these SPAC deals, not to mention many executives who will come on this show and others and argue that a traditional IPO process is too cumbersome. So they glad they took the SPAC merger route. That's nonsense. 
They're not glad. That makes me my skin crawl. The traditional IPO process is essential because it's how the SEC sniffs out phony claims and prevents absurdly rosy forecasts. It takes so long because they're thorough. Look in the end, the vast bulk of these SPAC stocks cost people fortunes. I hate them. I hate people who take your money. Sorry. Sorry to be so visceral. I think the people who issued the SPACs had utter contempt for you. They consider you easy marks for their money, their profits. This era must end. The SEC has to say that they're freezing these SPAC deals to study them, then just deep sex them. I want to see investment bankers, I, no more bra bragging about this stuff, right in the trash can. As far as crypto goes, can we admit that there are only two viable ones, Ethereum and Bitcoin? We shouldn't even mention the others or show them. Can we have crypto ruled to be a security, not a currency, to make it so investors have to put up more capital than 10% to buy these things? Can we have stable coins like Tether show exactly where their money is? Can we have their exchanges live by the same rules as regular brokerages so we have a decent shot of preventing bank runs in the event of another crash? We can't just rely on Sam Bankman freed the J.P. Morgan of crypto, for heaven's sake. Next, we need to see the advanced decline uh, continue to get better. This is an all-important gauge that measures the overall breadth of the market, how many stocks are going up versus down. When you, it, when you see it going steadily higher, that's a solid precursor to a run. Finally, we need to see some mergers between stronger established firms and the junk firms that have come public in the last few years, because maybe not they're all junk. junk. Surely, with those newer stocks down 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent, there must be some interest in them, some takeovers. Sadly, so far, it looks like nobody's really interested in buying any of this merchandise at any price. I can't figure out whether that's because it's still too expensive or because the company should never have come public to begin with. Here's the bottom line. You get all these, you'll see the bears on the run, and interest rates will plummet. But without them, the market remains a house of pain. Gary, in my home state of New Jersey. Gary. How are you, Jim? Thanks for taking my call. Of course. What's up? My question is intuitive surgical. I bought it. Post split at 335, bought it at 255 on the way down. What do you think of it at 200? Um, I hear that it had a not so great April, a not so great May, and a good June. I would like to buy the stock at 200. I think you're in good shape. Okay. Now, you get all these, you're going to see a run. And I know these are Ukraine. But let's put that back on the front page for us because it's what matters. Without these, this market's going to remain a house of pain. Ukraine. On Mad Money tonight. This is your world, and I appreciate you letting me into it. Yep, I had a chance last night to go into the metaverse with Mark Zuckerberg himself. Tonight, I'm sitting down with the visionary founder and CEO in an exclusive two-part interview. Then the crypto crunch continues, and one of the only ways to size up this type of speculative asset is to dig into the technicals. So I'm going off the charts on Bitcoin. And what really is a recession? I'm giving you the answers that you're looking for. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.